be combined with the mind, and then, and then you, you know, you believe this confusion is you. Yeah, this is the only, this is the spirituality, in fact. You know the difference, the difference between your mind, mm -hmm. which is where your conditioning lives, where your identity lives, all of this, and you, who is the self. You must know this difference. This must be very, very clear for everybody. Mm -hmm. you see? If it's not clear, all the confusion comes into the life. Because you're always speaking from the mind, not from the self. This is understood. Can you imagine the, the the greatest discovery in the human kingdom is the most simple thing, mm. and yet seem like the most difficult thing. What phenomena have same value for you? Um, in a way, yes. <clears throat> I don't I don't respond to it, all of them the same way. But underlying that, the same, the value being that it's uh, it's it's impermanent and uh, insubstantial, really. That's all, yeah. uh, but I don't want to say like, oh, it's just nothing. In a way, I don't have a I don't have a cynical dismissal of anything. But you understand, it's. Even when I say I understand, it is all aspects of the mind. But like I don't have to be someone to understand that. Understanding is just there. It's just there. You know? It's not thinking. Yes, I understand. No, it's just like you can say I remain undisturbed. Undisturbed. By the, the, the variations of the mind play, or personal, or psychological you know, sense of being, they don't cause any. Not only much meaning is given to them, to the extent that they they matter that much. So something always sees like somehow it's just going on. Even by your responses, you're not disturbed. No, no, no. By my responses, sometimes I'm disturbed, but my my disturbance is also phenomenal. If I get angry about something, oh, wow, how can you do this? But even in the midst of this so-called anger, I am the total tranquility. That's for me the one of the heights of privilege of living with you, yeah. recognizing mm. you mm. as that, mm. and seeing responses coming out of you, mm. and seeing that it has nothing to do with what you are. Yeah, you also experience it like that. You will experience it, of course. I mean, sometimes somebody is identified with my response or something. They think, "Oh, Muji is really angry with me," and my anger is very short, you know, because I can't keep it. And my memory of things which are not good, I can't keep them. My memory of things which are good, I can't keep them. You were talking about we were talking about the other dead masters, mm. or. For me, it would be like distant master that you see him only giving darshan, or like many people see you sitting on a chair. Mm. And uh, you always felt to me like this is impossible, you know. I can't be like that, you know. Always uh, a bit smiling, and you know. And then I met you, and I saw it has nothing to do with who I am. In fact, the mind would uh, the mind would like to. Create the sense that a real master looks a certain maybe sit like this, which is something you can't do, basically, mm. and that would mean that you can never be a master, exactly. isn't it? You can only be devotee worship. Uh -huh. exactly. uh -huh. So this is mine. Will do this thing, but uh, the master is most natural. Really. You see, so the master is not that is not your fantasy about a master. And is here to destroy your projections also, <clears throat> not by not by deliberately doing it necessarily alone, just by the presence. Just by the presence, you know, like not doing, and everything is completely destroyed because of the, the atmosphere and the, the, the force, the power of the presence. You, do it. you know, I told Lakshmi mm. the other day mm. that um, when we expose things to you, mm -hmm. because uh, you keep bringing us to the position of that, mm. then they can rise 
watched and disappear forever. Mm. And uh, when, when we learn what you teach us, mm. then you are with us even when we're not physically with you. This is true. things come up and then we know we take mm. the right position, they come up yeah. and they go. Yes, because when they come up and you take the position, which is a habit, um, to be a person, because all problems are personal. The minute you start to perceive like this thing is happening, or why is it? It's already you put yourself into the posture of a person, and the person is where you don't want to be in the face of a problem, basically, <laughs> because they just exaggerate everything, and then it becomes even ten times the, the what it is. Mm. When the problem, when the so-called problems arise, you go to presence, you stay in presence, and it's a very different thing. Because the presence is not, it's not moralistic. It doesn't see things right and wrong. It sees like opportunities or something, of seeing and different ways of seeing, exercising your powers of discernment and like that. Very different from person. Person is a very narrow thing, very afraid and insecure. So it's only looking for its own survival, which it exaggerates the threat. So it exaggerates the importance of surviving us. It's all created nonsense, nonsense. So meeting, experiencing the life from the position of uh, presence is very, very different. Then somehow you know that something brings this play into being. The thing that brings the play into being completes the play and solves everything for itself. It doesn't bring the play into being and go, I'm giving it to you, solve it. But this is the mind, our mind thing that is. You stay as it and see it solved, if you want to even call it uh, solved. At the same time, it is important to understand that in the body also there is a, a living force that exercises discernment and something. All of this is there. I don't want to waste time trying to teach because I don't think anybody can really learn it. You see, you can only die in it. Merge in it, and then so it's not learning, but more synchronicity. If you're in harmony with it, everything is fine. If you're in a sense of disharmony, there's not really anything that can be in disharmony with it actually. You see, because even the play of disharmony is inside the great harmony. So nothing can exist independent of it, and no disharmony can can just do anything to it. It's playing as all these things. When you see this, you think, "Oh my God!" It's, it's at the beginning you say, "Oh my God, it's so amazing! It's so simple, so simple." But after a while, you don't say it's simple anymore or complicated. You just let it be. <laughs> Sometimes you find yourself saying, "You know, but I don't like. No, no, I don't accept this." And but you said this thing. Blah, blah, blah. But inside, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you have to best laughing. All of this is just dreaming. Yeah, many times things come in life to push your mind into emptiness. Yes. Mm. And, uh, because you have to experience. Like as I told you about the lady who came to my house, staying in my house, and uh, she was in the town, in my town, calling. I think she was trying to call me actually in the telephone box. And somebody came in the telephone box in the middle of the town mm. and grabbed her bag and started to pull her bag from her. And she was holding on to the bag. And this big guy was kind of pulling the bag and she was holding on to <laughs> pulling, pulling, pulling. Finally he got the bag and started to run down the road. In the middle of the street, in the street, in the market. And she's running down the road. <laughs> back at him. Then quickly the police come. Wah, wah, wah. She saw her and they grabbed her and get in the car. Get in the car. She's in the police car. They're going around like this, looking for. Where is he? Look at anyway. Is it this one? This one? This one? She's looking like this, and but she's in this kind of. Uh, <laughs> they drove around for about ten minutes. Then they went to the station, and she goes into the station. They say, "Okay, you sit here for a moment. Somebody will come and talk to you." She sat there with all this stuff going on in Brixton Police Station, <laughs> and then ping. She's in a state of. You know, Satori. Mm. And everything she says, just felt love for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Total love. The police, the prisoners, just pure love. <laughs> Later that day, she came to see me at my house and she was telling me everything that happened. And she 
Yes, and I just felt love everywhere. It's love, it's love, it's silence. I didn't, I didn't even know why I'm here anymore. I didn't know why I'm here to report some crime or something. I just felt so far away. I was just in the most blissful state. You know? Then it somehow it wore off, you know. And so she was asking me, you know, how can I get back into that state? <laughs> So I told her, well, there's not a telephone box. <laughs> yeah. Go there with your bag, oh, put a lot of money, leave there and stand there outside. Talk like this, you get another satori. <laughs> uh, but strong things happen like that, and there's no time. There's no time to really think. Mm. When you don't have time to think, then everything becomes quiet. Like you are now. Maybe for the first time in a very long time, you're just here, in this gravity state. And then you will experience this now without the extremes. You don't have to be fireworks necessarily. Stolta moder Kunskap